Uh, this is Jamal Crawford. Uh, would like to talk to you tonight and obviously just do this message, uh, talk about, you know, what happened last night, what has happened since then, and so on and so forth. So, uh, first of all, would like to thank all my volunteers, uh, all the supporters out there who, you know, did everything from donate to knock on doors, passing out literature, making phone calls, and all the things that entail a campaign. You know, uh, all the people who came, particularly on election day, and stood out there, and you know, it was very cold out there, uh, and stayed out there, you know, uh, some people all day long, uh, who stayed at polling places and whatnot, so that we could cover the 19 polling locations within District 7. I gotta thank all those people, and I don't want you to think that I forgot you. Uh, we've been in a whirlwind this whole time, and ever since, really. Uh, you know, today, just for instance, to, so that you know uh, the type of things that, you know, we've done and continue to do, and part of me, because I'm, I'm on just, you know, very few hours of sleep, and uh, looks like we probably will have uh, very uh, little hours of sleep in, in the days to come. But uh, since what has happened, you know, Boston has elected a new mayor. Uh, the voters of District 7 did not make the choice for me as a write-in sticker candidate. Uh, obviously, the, the, the write-in sticker factor just seemed uh, insurmountable uh, at the end of the day. Uh, it seemed too complicated. There were various complications at various different polling locations. And uh, it was just seemed to be too confusing. Uh, so I knew that what an uphill battle this was, but I did think that we would be able to overcome it uh, based on, you know, our, our grassroots uh, ground game. Uh, and that in combination with what we've been able to do, I would say, and call it like guerrilla marketing and some of our uh, media and so on and so forth, the things that we've done that have been outside of the box, uh, you know, everything from the campaign trailer and feeding people and whatnot. And then that brings me to this little story. You'll also see a video posted uh, just tonight. You know, we had some leftover food and whatnot from uh, the volunteers and whatnot. So we obviously decided to take that, bag up lunches today and went to feed people. Uh, people have called me and been like, you know, are you okay? How are you doing? You know, all that. I'm, I'm fine. It's, everything continues as it was. There's no... No change, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a depression or a crisis or anything. It's, you know, today is Wednesday uh, and stuff moves on. Uh, people have asked about uh, Consulate Tito Jackson. We spoke. There's no hard feelings. I never hated him or it wasn't anything like that. Uh, I did believe and I still believe uh, that we need more aggressive uh, leadership and fierce advocacy in District 7. People have asked, are you going to run again? Uh, you know, most certainly we, we will run again. Uh, and there may be situations that open up, uh, you know, that will give us the opportunity at that point to, of course, then be on the ballot the correct way. This particular scenario did not allow for that. And we had to do what we had to do, which the answer to that was a write-in sticker candidacy. Uh, and in the end, it didn't pan out. And I'll try to be brief, but I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So uh, with the sticker campaign, the write-in campaign, at the end of the day, we got 700 and odd votes. Looked like 794 or something odd votes. Uh, you know, less than even Roy Owens, which was uh, a surprise. Once again, not disappointed, not sad, not mad or anything like that. I am, however, surprised. Because as anybody who was around me during that day uh, or at the polling locations, there was a, a, a palatable bit of momentum in the air. And it was a sense of euphoria. But I think uh, we... we you know, our campaign somewhat became like an urban legend, one that everybody was interested in, everybody knew about, well, not everybody, obviously, but many people knew about. There was, you know, uh, a buzz, or, so to speak, if you will, word of mouth, heard it through the grapevine type of thing. That was out there. People were familiar with the track record and the other things and whatnot, uh, but it just didn't translate in votes. We got high fives all day. We got honks of horns. We got, you know, uh, major support. And we did get support, obviously, from what is, uh, you know, the base that we have. Uh, many of whom were family and friends and residents and neighbors who, you know, I've interacted with in various uh, different degrees. A lot of it was word of mouth because people that I have relationships with outside the district told their family and friends within the district and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, that didn't come uh, uh, in our favor. So uh, what we're looking at now is 794 votes have been counted. Right now, the votes are being retabulated. Uh, we expect that there will be more votes that will come out of that uh, uh, from the other pile that is uh, called uncast or what have you. And as they go through it, there may be more ballots for me. But certainly, it will 
will not uh, be enough to be significant. Uh, it will just, you know, maybe increase the percentage point by, you know, a slight amount or, you know, we, we break another little uh, uh, threshold or what have you. But obviously it won't be significant uh, enough to mean anything. Um, other than that, uh, future plans. As I said for everybody, uh, what we've been doing and, and what we are now focusing on is the Boston Black Agenda. Please, everyone, go to bostonblackagenda.com if you haven't already. Fill out the information. We'll be hitting the streets with those papers uh, uh, for people to get involved and participate in the Boston Black Agenda. Uh, the candidate's questionnaire is obviously over because the mayor has now been elected, so that is closed. Uh, and the results from that were felt at the various forums that happened around the city. All the questions got asked. Uh, uh, but we will be producing a hard copy document. We will be producing a hard copy document for the Boston Black Agenda, as we said. Pardon me, the campaign phone is still ringing. Uh, so there will be a, a hard copy document for the Boston Black Agenda. Please, everyone, log on to bostonblackagenda.com. Get your information in there. We'll be presenting this to now uh, uh, Mayor Select, uh, uh, Marty Walsh, who will not take office until January after he's inaugurated. Uh, uh, we will present that to him as well as the members of the city council and, and other uh, elected officials uh, in the state house and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, uh, Boston Black Agenda, that's the new movement. Campaign office stays in place until uh, the 13th and maybe more. I'm going to see if we can't work it out to keep it there more, uh, longer rather. Uh, also, too, stay tuned. We're going to have a volunteer appreciation uh, dinner. Uh, uh, we'll probably do that at Manlio. We'll also have a debriefing session. Uh, and then obviously as well, too, District 7 uh, Boston. Dot com stays up for all your services and resources and quite frankly now I'll even now that I'm not running a campaign I'll even have more time to dedicate to keeping it updated uh, more frequently uh, and we're working on some uh, some other stuff as well that we'll announce uh, soon enough so just wanted to give you an update thank you to my volunteers thank you to the, my supporters thank you to the voters thank you to anybody that just went out and vote and got engaged and cared uh, enough to do that uh, congratulations to all the winners uh, last night, you know, we got a lot of our picks and other offices in and whatnot, you know, congratulations specific, uh, specifically to Ayanna Presley, uh, Michelle Wu, uh, Michael Flaherty, uh, uh, and then also to in my district, uh, you know, congratulations to uh, Tito Jackson, uh, but, you know, uh, as we have said, consistently, we will continue to do what we have done, we are going to hold people accountable, and, uh, you know, once again, Tito is a nice guy, and, and that's all fine and good, but that wasn't what the, the crux of my argument was. The crux of my argument is that I do not believe that District 7 receives the resources and services that it should. I still believe that, and we will continue to work that we've done to make sure uh, that we advocate in a fierce manner. Uh, to bring those uh, services and resources to the district. We have a lot of people in pain. We're suffering the most. We get the least. That mission will continue. That message will continue. Stay tuned to the Blackstonian, bostonblackagenda.com, district7boston.com. Thank you, volunteers, supporters, voters, everybody, even the haters. The haters are my motivators. Salute. Of the people, for the people. Jamal Crawford. Peace.